I mean, like the bar is here. It's good to take a girl out, but you can't meet a girl. Oh, uh, you know what I mean? Oh, really? So, so like, uh, like most of the the women that are at the bars in this area, they like on dates. There's not really a lot of single women. Yeah, from what I've noticed. Oh, okay, I got. I also I like who am I going out with over here? Yeah, yeah. I got, yeah. and who like all, who am I going out with? Like, shout out Mike Bramante. Who am I going out with Mike Bramante? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know Mike Bramante. Going out on the town? No. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I got you. You know, yeah. so none of my friend like non-comedy friends are single. Yeah, 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 yeah. So like, who am I going out with? Uh, yeah, yeah. No, I, got I you. rely on the shows. <laughs> <laughs> That's how you get in your play. I got you, man. And nah, I ain't nothing wrong with that. No. I'm always fascinated by the Upper East. I, was, I, I walked over here and I saw like a fencing. It's like a like you can get. This place is wild, dude. It's yeah. a little old New York, little like money yeah, New York, yeah. but also a lot of poor New York. Yeah, you yeah. You get a lot of mix here. Yeah, definitely though, because you got the projects right over there. Projects right over here, but yeah. fencing club right over here. <laughs> yeah. What the hell's going on? <laughs> I know, right? It's just like yeah. It's, I be, but that's that's New York for you though. New York is like a, a melting pot. Like yeah, well that Atlanta's not. No, I, th- I think down south and other areas outside of you know New York, it's it, you, it's, it's like a separation. You can you can be secluded from like people that are different from you. You know, maybe financially and class wise, though. Like you can kind of like you, you can just you know drive someplace or get, get a nice little subdivision. New York is just like all right, you can get in a nice building, right? <laughs> and you're surrounded by shit. <laughs> yeah, it's like you can, you can have a nice block, but you know you still. Still a homeless guy at your train station, you know? Like, you you know. That's not bad, though. We only got, like, one homeless guy over here. Oh, really? Not bad. Oh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, it's cool. If you got one homeless, yeah, I mean, shit, that's all you really need, really, though. <laughs> well, I guess in Atlanta, it was built with cars in mind. Yeah, so it's, you know, it's just like, you know, suburban, you know, rural areas, you know. It's probably like that you go out to Connecticut or something like that, though. You know, you can Fuck kinda, that, dude. Uh, where Connecticut is like a... Oh, shit, dude. Oh, uh, really? Connecticut's not like... Connecticut shit, dude. Oh, uh, really? I hate on Connecticut. Oh, uh, really? Yeah, dude. I always looked at Connecticut as like, that's where people with money from New York, they went and they got, and they bought houses. I think like uh, Greenwich, Westport, yeah. those areas. But most of the state is just like nothing. Uh, just a whole bunch of nothing going on uh, there. Or I heard Hartford is kind of is kind of hood too, though. Hartford's hood. Yeah. New Haven. New Haven? New Haven's hood. It does sound like, if you think of something like New Haven. It sounds fancy. Yeah. It's not. Yeah, yeah. Well, Yale's there. Oh. So you have Yale and it's surround. It's like Columbia, mm. just surrounded by shit. Oh, but okay. Yale's nice. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. I get that. Yeah, more parts of Connecticut are hood than you would think. Bridgeport. Yeah, I I, I heard though, and it's crazy too because like from the outside looking in, you think of Connecticut, you think of like just the way it sounds. Well, Connecticut. it's just what you see like uh, from TV. Yeah, yeah, definitely. You know? Yeah. But like, yeah, no, dude. I also have a theory, and the Bridgeport. McDonald's gave me this theory. What? The worse the neighborhood, the better McDonald's. Oh, well, yeah. I, I think that's a scientific yeah, fact. Yeah, yeah, I could see that, though. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah, probably. Because, You're, yeah, I, I, that, that makes sense, though. Because, you know, fast food, you know, is like... They might take their time with it. You think so? I think they do. You think they take their time? I've been to nice McDonald's and, like, nice neighborhood McDonald's. I've been to bad neighborhood McDonald's. Yeah. Bad neighborhood McDonald's, they care more, I think. Well, you, I mean, that's that's interesting. I'm thinking mainly because probably the people that are making the food are probably they they know more about how to make quick, fast food, though. You know? Do you think you think it's just uh, prior experience? <laughs> I think it just might be. You think about a nice area, and you know, people back there probably not eating the food, though. You know, they probably not eat. I don't know. Maybe you think a nice area. They're probably eating healthier. They just working to get a check. They probably yeah, but listen, no one's working at McDonald's and they're like, listen, I gotta go to Sweet Green. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, you might have a young high school kid that's like watching his weight. I mean, like you know, dude, that was me. It didn't work out <laughs> great. <laughs> it's funny. You said, I gotta, I gotta go to Sweet Green. Yeah, you'll probably work at Sweet Green. You know? Yeah, you're right. If you're someone that needs a job but you're looking to watch yeah. a few calories, yeah. You would go to Chipotle before, yeah. Even though Chipotle's in the shit, shitter right now. Chipotle's yeah. down. Oh yeah, Chipotle is. Chipotle's trash. Yeah. What's what's what happened with Chipotle though? Yeah. I I'm gonna I tell could. you, Panera Bread. You heard about the guy? Uh, it's a kid had a heart attack from the Panera Bread uh, lemonade. Yeah. Yeah. What, what, I feel like what, we did. People what, what, didn't what, talk what, enough about <laughs> this. 
Yeah, like what's going on with Panera Bread though? Well, you know what the I story mean, is with that guy. What's up? What? What's up? Well, you know the lemonade it has a uh, two hundred milligrams of caffeine. You guys, you know, call us and if you know the <laughs> exact uh, but, measurement. I mean, but what's up with so lemonade? Why does lemonade have so much caffeine? I thought lemonade was just lemons and, and what like are they injecting caffeine in the lemonade traditional chris you're 100 right with traditional <laughs> lemonade there's no caffeine in traditional lemonade like why panera said fuck this dude yeah we're gonna throw some caffeine in here put a lot in it yeah but this guy already had a heart condition and then he drank three of them uh, you can't be drinking 600 milligrams of caffeine <laughs> yeah he didn't die did he yeah dude he died? He's dead as hell. 100% oh. dead. What, so was he an older guy or a young guy? Yeah, I think older guy. Oh, really? But like not that old, like 50. Oh, that might, that not might, a kid. That could have been ruled as a suicide, though. Chris, I think we're on to something here. <laughs> I mean, no. He just, might have yeah. been, That's the most delicious way to go out. <laughs> I mean, I Three think. Three glasses of lemonade? I think the autopsy, man. Come on, man. If you got a condition and you go in on, and, and they do have a reputation of having spiked lemonade, though. This is not their first time. Some, it was another kid. It was a young kid had an issue. Really? With it. This is not the first time. Call us in if you if you <laughs> heard this. Yeah, I'm just trying to figure out. But like, and Panera Bread stands for healthy food. Like, who's uh, over the drink department? Listen, though? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if that's how they do it. <laughs> they do a drink in a solid department. <laughs> I don't know if that's how they do it. I'm just saying. Like, I wouldn't say they're known for healthy food. I mean, that's what they're selling, though. I mean, the fuck are you talking about? I mean, Panera Bread, they do salads, they do sandwiches and soups. They do soup in a bread bowl. <laughs> they do pasta in a bread bowl. They do bread in bread. I mean, but any place that traditionally sells salads, you think, like, if, if you had to choose between McDonald's and Panera Bread, and you trying to eat healthy, you're going to go with Panera Bread. I don't know about that, Chris. Really? You would go with McDonald's over Panera Bread? I mean, I would do, I'll be honest, I would do a little research <laughs> before going. <laughs> I mean, you could do a salad at McDonald's too, but if you're, listen, if those are your two options, <laughs> you're not doing great. <laughs> a salad at McDonald's is, is, is all iceberg, man. You know you're not I mean? an iceberg guy. <laughs> Iceberg is, I, I need some greenery in my, in my I cell. mean, uh, I'm going to argue with you, Chris. That's pretty green. <laughs> what, iceberg? Iceberg. Iceberg is, is, is a little, is, is lacking a little melanin. Have you, iceberg is, you know, iceberg. It's the, pa it's the palest <laughs> version of the greens. It's, it's like the albino of all. <laughs> yeah, iceberg, uh, from my experience, I feel like when iceberg, it's all about romaine now, though. Romaine. Uh, romaine, okay. Romaine has a little bit more green to it. Uh, what do you got? You got uh, spinach. Uh, you got the, uh, what else? What's the other one? Uh, yeah, so any iceberg is like so out of style, though. Like, iceberg, <laughs> if you do <laughs> wax melanin, might be the funniest thing I've ever heard about salad. <laughs> yeah, I mean, nobody's even, do they even sell heads of lettuce anymore? When last time you seen a head of lettuce, man? I don't know. I'm not a farmer. <laughs> <laughs> the last time I seen a head of lettuce, I don't know. Yeah, they don't sell it. At, no one buys heads of lettuce. <laughs> yeah, that's that's yeah. And that was I think that was iceberg. No, romaine too. I don't think well, iceberg's no, the only head of lettuce. Yeah, I, romaine comes in like the uh, like almost like a like a stalk now. No, well you know it, it doesn't come. <laughs> I'm also acting like I know what like <laughs> produce looks like. <laughs> I know, right? I just found that asparagus grows from the ground like a tree. Oh, really? You know that shit? I didn't know that. They should teach. They should teach that in schools. Okay. They should teach finance and how f stuff grows. Because I saw a picture of it, I was like, the, f the well, fuck is that? Asparagus. I, I think well, most it just grows up like oh. a single stalk of asparagus. Oh. It's just like a bunch of single. That's how asparagus oh, grows. Oh, that's interesting. Not enough people are talking about this. Yeah, asparagus. Uh, yeah, you you got to be careful with the asparagus, though. The asparagus. You got to uh, be careful. <laughs> yeah, asparagus. What, what, what to come from a bad neighborhood? <laughs> <laughs> no, but you know, asparagus makes your pee very, very strong. Yes. Yeah. So I mean, you want. I mean, careful. what are you doing with your pee? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, you know, it's just like you know. Yeah, you know, it's just. Yeah, if you decide to commit a crime, <laughs> don't also pee there. Because <laughs> like, who's had asparagus in the area in the past? Yeah, I mean, it's forty-five minutes. But like, it's something about your pee stinking, though. Like, you know, like, it, like when you smell. You have self -con you're self-conscious about this. Well, I mean, you know, a strong pee smell. Asparagus. I mean, I'm not. That's that's the first thing I think about when I'm eating asparagus. Like, yo, my pee Let is. Let me ask you a question. <laughs> What's up? What would you rather have, asparagus pee <laughs> or garlic breath? I think I'd probably have asparagus pee. You'd rather have asparagus pee. Because nobody really is going to 
garlic breath. You know, I mean, that, the way that's you're effect- talking, it everyone's gonna sp- smell well, it. My, I, I'm still like I don't want to smell the asparagus pita. Like yourself. The, yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, but you know where it came from. Well, yeah, it's not it, a mystery. Well, yeah, but it's just like ah, it's just like if you eat something that you know, take a shit. It's just like ah, you don't want to have to realize. You know, that's what came out of you. Yeah. No, oh, no, yeah. I, I, I sound like a like like a diva right now. I'm like, <laughs> it's just a it's a wild take I've heard <laughs> to not eat asparagus. So I'm going, to, we're going to a steakhouse. We're yeah. getting the sides. What's what sides are you getting? I'm gonna go with some spinach. Uh, cream spinach, regular spinach. Like uh, maybe like some sauteed spinach. Saute spinach. Uh, I'm a, I'm a, hopefully they have a nice mac and cheese. I like a nice little mac and cheese. Maybe a little, a little crust on top. Yeah, maybe lobster yeah. mac and cheese, man. Yes. I'm gonna do a lobster mac and cheese. Okay. And uh, maybe like a potato or something. I'm gonna go heavy on the starches, you know. Well, yeah, we're going Steak. to. We're having a night. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, of course. Get, but you get a mash, you get a baked. It depends on the reputation, you know. It, what if the restaurant has a good reputation of a man? Okay, or, you know, because you know certain restaurants. You <laughs> I thought you meant the reputation of the potato. <laughs> 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 yeah, so it's just like, what have I heard? Like, you know, like you know, certain restaurants have. Known for like yo, the mash is is, is what you want to go. You're with. a guy who asked the waiter. I asked the waiter. You asked the waiter. Yeah, I'm big on asking. Like yo, what are y'all known for? Like what, what should I do? Thank you. Yeah, I I'm, think I do that all the time. Yeah, more people need to ask yeah. what a place is known like, for. Don't just go raw dog in the menu, man. <laughs> no, don't go with your gut. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or with a menu you don't know. Yeah, I want to know what most people are ordering. I want to know what you like. Yes. And then I'm gonna put it all together though. You know. Look at the price, because you can also tell how good something is by the price. Okay. You know, because sometimes if, Cause it, if they're trying to push something, if they're trying to push something, or if something is a little bit more expensive, that might mean that using probably better ingredients, it's a little bit okay. more expensive to make. Okay. So that might be something you want to go with. But I will say, whatever what? they say they like, I will go with, because yeah. I can't deal with the pressure. Yeah, yeah. If, yeah. if I go a different direction, then they're like... Why do you ask all, me? I do, I do that all the time. Bro. You you alter the path. I alter the I ask them. That's insane. I ask them. I'm like, yo, what would you recommend? And then I think about them. I look them up and down, and I'm like, you do judge we? the person. <laughs> yeah. So I, so I kind of look at them and I say, all right, now if you like that, you don't look like you're me, <laughs> hmm. or, or we don't look like we have any similarities. So I, you know, I'm, it's 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 a little superficial, but I might do that though. So okay, we're going. It's a woman. She's like, "Hey, get the T bone and the uh, and the mashed potatoes." You're like, "All right, give me the New York strip and the bait." <laughs> I might go that route. <laughs> He'll go hash, or, the hash brown. Or, or it might be how they're saying it too, though. Because sometimes they can just say it in a way where they're just trying to brush me off and they're just trying to get me to order. Then I'm like, "Ah, they, they oh, I'll really- stand up and get out of the restaurant with that." Uh, oh, really? At a steakhouse? Yeah. What, what are we doing? Friendlies? <laughs> <laughs> by the way, what's, what's what's your favorite steakhouse in the city? It's a fantastic question. I haven't hit all of them. Okay. So I, I'm a, as a traditional New York kid, mm-hmm. I got to say Peter Luger's. Okay. But if you told me it was something else, I, would, I wouldn't disagree with you. Okay, I got you. You know? I think I, I think I made a mistake by asking that question as if I've been to a lot of steakhouses. How many steakhouses have you been to? <laughs> I think I've been to, uh, I don't know if I've been to Peter Luger's. Is that Peter Luger's? Peter Luger's, yeah, in Williamsburg. Yeah. Uh, I don't think I've been there. I've been to Del Frisco's. Okay. Which is, you know, a little bit. A little, little corporate steakhouse. Yeah, a little Cheney. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Listen, I love a corporate steakhouse. Yeah, a little Cheney. Then I went to this other one that's not too far from Carnegie Hall. It's like on 47th. I went Scars? There. It might be. It's, it's, it's definitely like a. Like a like Where the a, mafia guy got shot? Nah, nah, nah. It's, it's like no. New Age. It's a little bit more contemporary. New Age? Yeah, it's, it's, it's not like a, like a classic steakhouse. I don't know. Yeah, I, I probably should have. Should have hit a lot more steakhouse before I ask what's your favorite steakhouse because I feel like well, I, I'm bringing nothing to the table that's fine yeah. listen you've been to steakhouses before yeah I like a good steak though. I like a good steak and a cigar that's my thing and it's a, you're a cigar guy I'm a good cigar guy okay you're a classy guy I don't know you wear robes I do have robes, man. I th- you look like a guy that has <laughs> robes. I do have. I got a couple bathrobes. I got like three different. You got bath- a. You got three different bathrobes. Got three different bathrobes. Is there a reason for this? Uh, well, I got one that's got a hood. So if I'm washing my hair, you know, I throw okay. the hood on. I got another one that's just a little bit more fancier. You know, when I'm like, you know, it's just it's got more of a design, less comfort, but it's just like I don't know. I just feeling a little stylish. What, so, so you when you walk out to get the paper? <laughs> what, what are we talking about? Like a Tony Soprano robe? What the hell are you doing here? Well, you know, you just you know you know what it was. 
my girl bought me like like I asked for a bathrobe for Christmas because okay. we would take these vacations, and you know you go to these nice hotels and they give you these nice bathrobes, and we would just like a nice bathrobe. And then it started because we were looking for a Christmas gift to give her parents and everybody in the family. Okay. So we got everybody bathrobes. Because if you think about it, though, this like. This is a big bathrobe family. <laughs> yeah. Because, you know, I, I think that's, like, the best gift to give somebody, Christmas-wise. Because it's like. <laughs> what does that mean, because, Christmas-wise? Well, I, well, I feel like, you know, Christmas, you just think about it. You're like, it. birthday, not an acceptable Well, yeah, gift. I think birthday is a little different. You kind of got to, you know. But for a Christmas gift, I think a bathrobe. Because it's just like, who's not going to wear a bathrobe? Like most gifts, oh, I'm not going to use this. But who doesn't take showers, though? Who's You know what I mean? Like everybody could use a bathrobe if you think about it, though. Technically, I agree with you. Everyone yeah. can use a bathrobe. But like my, my dad would never wear a bathrobe. Oh, really? Gay. Gay? Bathrobe gay. Bathrobe. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's, yeah. I can see. What about you? Would you ever wear one? You kind of look like a bathrobe. I'm old. I'm I'm. I would say I'm in the market for a bathrobe. You're bathrobe curious? I'm bathrobe curious. <laughs> right, right, right. Well, thanks, Chris. I'm going to get a text <laughs> when my dad hears that. <laughs> yeah, I like a nice bathrobe. Well, you know, I'm, I'm getting older, too, though. Like, as I get older, I'm, I'm starting to, like, you know, I'm, I'm in my 40s, man. I'm 40, 42. I'm about to be 43. You're 42. I'm about to be 43 this year, man. Damn. Yeah, so as you get older, man, cigars, so bathrobe. So you need one more bathrobe. For maybe. every decade. Yeah, yeah, maybe. Yeah. A nice. You should get a bathrobe. I can see you with a bathrobe. What am I doing? I live in a studio apartment. What am I going to do? Put the bathrobe from there, walk five, you know, five feet, I'm here? What's well, so up with you? You just put a towel around your waist? I'm a towel guy. You a towel around the waist guy? Yeah, a towel okay. around the waist guy. See, just think about it. If Puffy would have had a bathrobe when he was running down that hall, mm. that would have been a different scenario, man. It would have distracted people. <laughs> People are like, is he hitting her? I can't even. Ta- I mean, I'm too focused on the bathrobe. We about to get canceled for that one, though. Yeah, that. Well, was- listen, <laughs> we're not getting canceled for him being the hell out of her. I also feel like we kind of dropped that story. That was hot for a week. Well, I, I, and then he went to Top Golf, and no one talked about it ever again. Yeah, I mean, I think the biggest issue with that was it's just like there was. There was nothing anybody could do because I don't think he he got in trouble for it because I think there was a statute of limitations. So it was kind of like everybody kind of dropped it because it wasn't like we could keep it going because he was going to get locked up for it. I think once people kind of found out like he couldn't go to jail for it and he was just still walking around free, I think it was just kind of like, I don't know, maybe what you think. But what isn't the whole thing like he's uh, he's music Epstein. He had videos. Well, Epstein wasn't beating people, though, was he? Oh, we're just talking about the beating. Uh, I, th- I thought the beating cracked open a whole treasure chest of stuff that he's done. Well, they were already on to him. They already had proof of all that other stuff. The beating was just, and then on top of that, I think Cassie took that settlement. So I think they, you know, with something about the money. They put it she, under the rug. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but then they do the settlement, and then he was like, uh, oh, I'm going to give all the the masters to the artists because I just think that's. That's the right thing to do. And then six months later, all this came out. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, I heard Puffy, like, you know, I, I think a lot of people knew that Puffy was kind of corrupt, man. He was like, I, I think it was always like something that people knew. So I, maybe people are not as surprised. I'm not surprised. You weren't surprised? Nah, I heard hella stories about Puffy. Really? Yeah, in the black community, people knew what Puffy, I mean, there's so many stories going around. Like, yo, like stuff that I, I don't, wouldn't even feel comfortable saying on camera, though. Right, we'll put it on Patreon. <laughs> Save yeah. for the page, folks. Well, just I know some people in the music industry that knew a lot about Puffy and like you know. Okay. Yeah. Because so the whole thing, I thought I didn't know this until the story came out. Usher lived with him when he was fourteen. He had the what's it called? He was his uh, caregiver. Oh, maybe that he was Usher's caregiver at fourteen. Uh, I wouldn't be. What surprised. the hell's going on there, dude? Bieber. We- he Be- wasn't given to him as a caregiver, but Bieber was with him at 14. Oh, yeah. What yeah. the hell's going on here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, uh, these parents, when they want the kids to, to get famous, and you know, they, you know, it's just like boarding school or something, you know? like <laughs> I, Chris, I don't, I don't think it's like boarding school at all. <laughs> it's like entertainment boarding school. Man. Yeah, except there's a lot more rape. <laughs> <laughs> Substantially more. Yeah, uh, yeah, it's yeah. From what from what I'm hearing, like I heard, Diddy was out here, man. He was out there and there and him and her. Uh, he was all over the place. Yeah, man. But you know, it's like you, you kind of wonder. Like I don't think you can really reach a level of billionaire status without having something. I don't even think they even let you in certain doors unless you got 
some some dirt on you though. If you're too clean, that you just can't. I think everybody that hits that level, they gotta have something. What do you think's that level? Like the billionaire status, like oh, it's a billion, you're saying. I, billionaire I think once status. you like billionaire status, and you get to a certain, I, I think you have to have some some in order to really hit those. Because because once you get to a certain point where you just have a lot of money. Then you, then it becomes all right. Now it's just about the information and the introduction and the people you meet to make even more money to hit. Like you know, because right. once you get to a certain level, it's just like all right, you can just plateau it like a millionaire. But in order to hit, hit, and I think once you get to that point, you got to have some dirt on you though. So when I look at people like that, I'm always just thinking I know for them to get to that point, they got it. Like so, it's just I'm not surprised of people that are that successful financially when they have. When all of this stuff comes out, it's just like, yeah, you got to. Yeah, but then you have someone who's kind of doing the opposite. Like you have Fifty, who's not billionaire status, yeah. but he just calls everyone out on his shit. Let me see. Let me see what's up with. I think Fifty. <clears throat> also, think too though. Fifty has such a street background too though, that it, his dirt was up front. You know what I mean? So it's just like he already has like. Like uh, like a level of like dirt to the point where it's just like what you, what you going like what else yeah, like is that? A, now he's untouchable. Yeah, it's just like yeah, I don't know, but like I, I see like Diddy is somebody that was kind of like I I don't know how street Diddy was, but like I mean Bed Stuy, Marcy houses. Who Diddy? Diddy. Nah, that's that's the wrong black guy, man. Was he not more? Call us in. <laughs> nah, I thought so, the, the whole thing with uh, Diddy was Harlem. That's Jay Z. Uh, no, uh, I thought with him and Biggie. Because Biggie no, was well, also Biggie, Biggie. Biggie's Brooklyn. I don't think he's from the projects though. I think Biggie's just he's best from out. Bed-Stuy. He's from Best Style. Yeah. I thought he was also Marcy. Nah, nah. Diddy was from Harlem, Mount Vernon. I think he was raised in uh, Mount, Mount Vernon. Vernon. He's raised in Mount Vernon. He's a fucking Westchester kid. Well, yeah. I mean, he. His, but his his father used to run with Frank Lucas though. You're losing me. I don't know who that is. Frank Lucas is like a notorious like uh like. Kingpin, drug okay. law, yeah, yeah, yeah. This, this is, this is definitely getting you getting into black, black urban culture right Listen, now. Listen, I told you we hit record and we go. Uh, yeah, yeah. We definitely. find out what happens. We talk about steaks, <laughs> robes, and black culture. That's what it is. Yeah, yeah, but uh, yeah, man, that Diddy situation is. And, and Jay Z got away scot free. What uh, what they saying that they just saying that some stuff is about to come out about Jay Z too though. Yeah, they've been saying it. Where is it? I don't know. They still focused on Diddy though. I know, and I, the whole time people were talking about Kanye. He's out. Yeah, Kanye. That's the thing. Kanye never really had any. It's crazy. You think Kanye, Kanye never had any like sexual, like abuse allegations? Did he? No, he's just a raging anti-Semite and uh, yeah, <laughs> said some crazy shit. Yeah, 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 definitely. But you know, once you start getting to that sexual abuse, that's like I mean, the anti-Semite is. It's not fantastic. Yeah, but like, yeah, I mean, you know, but like, so what I think what you're trying to say is, <laughs> if Kanye did commit some crimes, some sexual assault crimes, he could have kept his relationship with Adidas and the Gap. Maybe. Clip it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, but like. Yeah, Kanye, but Kanye also has like mental health issues too, though. So you kind of yeah, you kind of write that off too, though. But these other guys, they, I mean, they're pretty, they're pretty sane, you know. They're they not diagnosed. <laughs> That's the problem. Yeah. I think we really hit the nail on the head here. Yeah. Once you're diagnosed, then commit crimes. Yeah, because then you because then, then it's a write off. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's just like you complete insanity, though. Right. That's the tax write off of <laughs> sexual assault. Exactly. Is a psychologist saying you're crazy? Exactly. Yeah, man. Um, but yeah, man, Kanye. It's yeah. It's 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 a lot coming out, and it's crazy too. Cause back in the day, like this is all of this is like a product of the Me Too movement. But like, like back in the day, guys were wilding, though, man. Like when you hear insane. The, I mean, it was just like the craziest. I mean, stuff that I like. I mean, I don't know about you, but me, I, I would never think about doing some of this stuff. No. <laughs> what the hell does that mean, Chris? I don't know about you, but me. But what was that saying? I thought, I thought we knew each other enough where you could be like, I know both of us <laughs> <laughs> wouldn't do this. No, I'm just messing with you, man. 
<laughs> yeah, but no, nah, I know you wouldn't do some of that stuff. But I mean, you just, you know, it's just crazy. Like, like some of the stuff. But, you know, I also think that. I think that's one downside of becoming like really, really wealthy. I think you start to you start to have these. You, nobody's telling, you no. I think that's a factor. Yeah. Nobody's telling, you no. Then I also think you get bored with like natural the basic urges or the basic interest that that, that me and you have you know yeah i you, think you know like just think like you know like I'm, you know we you know nice looking woman nice looking girlfriend we're good of course you get to a certain point where you you've had the nicest looking girl that not you you've had the baddest woman so then you goes <laughs> you know i think you start you, you start to, you know. You right, right, right. You know you've uh, you've had filet mignon so much. You're like, uh, uh, yeah. What else is out there? Exactly. Well, you that's Mi uh, Mick Jagger and uh, David Bowie, right? That was the rumor with them. What was that? They what? were banging. They banged so many women, then they started banging. Yeah. It's like a full. It's like a parabola. Yeah, yeah. A reverse I, I think, parabola. I, I think that's like you just. It's almost like you just get so wealthy, you get so rich that like. Like sexuality is not even a thing. It's just like you get so rich, you become a lib. <laughs> like who? What's a lib? What's a, a liberal. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah that's funny. Yeah. <laughs> you just get like, yeah, that's true. Fiscally conservative, socially liberal, is yeah. a billionaire. It's Diddy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's that's exactly what's going on. Yeah. Do do you like? Do you, what kind of music do you listen to? What do you? I'm a big uh, like early 2000s, mid 2000s rock guy. I got you. I got you. But also, really anything from like 2004 till 2015. I got you. You know what I think about rich man? You know, like me and you, we came up like I feel like we kind of like started together. Right? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. And at the mics, and uh, like I really, really was always a fan of your right, man. You always oh, had thanks. solid. You know what I mean? Like when you know, like. I always had well thought out bits, man. Like, oh uh, well, that makes one of us that thinks that. But I appreciate. Oh really? It. Yeah. You remember? I used to. I used to have you. You remember the the show that you came and did? It was Harlem? the last show I did before uh, lockdown. Yeah, yeah. And like, it was that restaurant's last night. Over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They closed though. <laughs> Not because of the pandemic. Yeah. So, so let me ask you a question. What uh, like what what are you what are you talking about now? Stand up wise, what's like what's like what now? You, it's just like uh, well, I know you're running a club, so you don't really have a whole lot of time to do stand up though, right? No, that's where I do it all. Oh, okay, I got you. I yeah, got you. I got you. So uh, it's just more, just what I, like I was just in uh, Dublin for a week doing shows. Oh, really? So I was just like just European experiences. What I noticed, different cultures. Oh, okay. Stuff like so that. So you went to Dublin to do some shows? Yeah. Oh, really? So how did you get out there? What was the connect? What happened? Uh, oh, just uh, like Jess Levin hooked me up with a bunch of stuff. Uh, Pozzello's been out there. Oh, okay. Uh, Norman went out there, I think. Okay. Yeah. Cause How, how's the scene stitches. out there? Unbelievable. Really? Get get out there. Really? I, I said this last episode, but for all you gays, but I don't know if you know who the main vocal demographic of this show is. It's, it's a lot of gay Did guy. you do some research? N no, not yet. It's, 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 if you read the comments, oh, really? most of the comments are gay foot fetish people. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Are you serious? I swear to God. Foot fetish? Why? Because you got your feet up? I do. I've done this for the past four years, and it just once I bought the ring light, yeah, it just brought a flood of people. Uh, so if you show your feet, yeah, you will get a million DMs for foot pics. Are you serious? I swear to God. Okay, well let me hide. That's up feet. to you. <laughs> I do it on Patreon. Oh really? But you can show it here. So you making money off your feet pics? No, I just put on uh, Patreon. We talk. We talk about whatever you want to talk about. Uh -huh. But I had my socks off during it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, dude. A little, a little thirst Shit's trap. Shit's wild. <laughs> <laughs> a little thirst trap. These are guys asking for feet pics? Oh, like, uh, I don't know if you know Zach McGovern. No, I'm not familiar. No, he does. Uh, yeah, he's all over the place. But he came on. He's been making hundreds of dollars off foot pics. Are you serious? I won't actually do it. Really? Yeah. But like, there's, like Jack Finnegan, first time he came on, I was like, just to let you know you're going to get a million DMs. He's like, okay, I'm sure. He legitimately got like 70 DMs for foot pics. Really? Yeah. Man, that's that's an interesting niche you got there. It's something I never thought would happen, and Chris, we're here. Mm, foot picks. And now it's fun because now we have uh, there's just like average comedy fans 
that have watched this, uh, okay. and now they battle in the comments. Uh, they'll be like, someone get these foot fetish guys out of here, and then they'll be like, fuck you, we've been here first. <laughs> foot fetish wars, Dak. Yeah, dude. Shout out to you, though. Shout out to the gays. Shout out to the straights. Mm, Just yeah, keep definitely. subscribing. Almost at 2,000 subscribers. Need a couple more. Oh, uh, okay. Well, so you're doing well with this podcast. Yeah, dude. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, that's what's up, man. How long you been doing it? Four years. Oh, shit. For real? Yeah, yeah. Damn. I need to, I need to, I need to get a podcast. I yeah, heard dude. a podcast is like the way Jump to Jump in, dude. Yeah. Water's fine. It'll work. It's a bunch of gay guys who like feet out there. What's up? Let me ask you. Editing it? Is, 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 is a challenge editing? I do zero editing. Oh, really? Well, unless you, you know, afterwards you're like, hey, cut this. Yeah. I do zero. Uh, I just publish, and that's it. This is authentic. Oh, uh, okay, okay. Yeah, I dude. Gotcha, I got you. That's good to know. Uh, I feel like I, I, I said a lot on here so far. Dude, we've said nothing so far. <laughs> <laughs> that's why It's fun to see people's first time on here because yeah. you're like, I don't know what to say. Yeah. By the second, third time you're on, it gets it gets fucking wild. It gets wild. Oh, yeah, dude. And this isn't even on the page. Oh, word? Oh, yeah. Oh, man. Say whatever you want. Say it with your chest. <laughs> say it with your chest. I don't know. You know, I, I, I try to be a little bit more mindful about what I say sometimes. No one cares. You think so? No one cares. Oh. Zero people care. You, you don't think about something coming back to bite you later on? I mean, what am I saying that's that crazy? Yeah. If you take anything I say on well, this. Well, no, you don't say anything crazy. Right, I'm not saying yeah, anything yeah, wild. Yeah. But, like, if you take anything out of, like, it's a comedy podcast. Yeah. If this was, like, a political podcast or a finance podcast and you're saying yeah. something crazy. Yeah. Yeah, then. But it's comedy. It's comedy. Relax. Relax. Yeah, that's right. I like this. I'm going to let my head out. Yeah, dude. Relax. Sit back. Whiskey. Yeah. I don't know. Whatever you want. Yeah, so let me see. What else is going on, man? But yeah, you got to get to Dublin. You got to get to Dublin. Unbelievable scene. And so how many shows did you do? What you, what you do? Ended up doing, what, six? Six shows? Were you headlining? Were you closing out? How much time were you doing? So they do it all odd there where they have a break in between the show, mm. like in halfway point, okay. like British and uh, Irish comedy does that. Okay, okay. So they'll have a host, mm. two comics, 15-minute break, 15, 20-minute break. Host, three comics. Oh. So you were just doing spots. So, yeah, I'm not like headlining. Cl- they don't do that there. They don't even headline. They don't do that. Uh, so, host. like, the headline would be the guy that goes last. Like, I went last on a few. But you're, you're not a yeah. headliner. How much time are you doing on these shows? Started with five, and by the end of the week, they were giving me 20. Oh, uh, that's what's up. So, it was like, you and know, how, it was like any crowds, other scene. Man, they, were, they were open. Fucking. I'll show you a video. When we finish mm. recording, mm. shoulder to shoulder packed in every room. Mm. Insane. Mm. It's like a brand new scene. It's like mm. Austin. Mm. I would compare it to Austin. Mm. But it's even better because you could run and do like eight, nine. On Wednesday, you could do eight or nine spots a night mm. all in the same mm. area. Mm. Unbelievable. So, so let me ask you a question. So what, like, what are your goals with comedy right now? What are you trying to do? I like, would like to be Andrew Schultz. You really, okay, I got That's you. my goal. Okay, I got you. So you really want to get your own little platform and that's everything's been designed with that purpose. Okay. Podcast, my own club. So I guess Rogan would be the better comparison. Uh, Okay. Okay. So I don't have to rely on a single person for anything ever. Mm. And how's the club going? Sell out every night. Sell out every night. What is this Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday? No, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, right? Thursday, Friday. And And how many seats you got? How many? Depends on the layout of like, when people buy tickets. Oh, okay. So it's like it's anywhere between 28. We've had 42 in there. Okay. But comfortably, I would say 28 to 34. That's nice. Is for people to be comfortable. Okay. I got you. That's good, man. You know, I started a little space uptown. Yeah. I got to come get you up too, man. I do Mondays and Saturdays. Monday, Saturdays. Perfect. Monday's like a free show. Saturday, I sell tickets. Small room too, like 25. To like, no, nah, it's like 45 seats. It's good. It's a workout room. Yeah, yeah. We're yeah. going up there. We're throwing shit against the wall. Okay. You know, talk about Dublin. Talk about uh, Three Little Pigs. Okay. That joke's not working. Okay. But we're getting there. I got you. I don't know. How long have you been? You moved here from Atlanta. Yep. Okay. 2012. Oh, you've been here for a minute. Yeah. Damn. And uh, that's, that's right around the time I met you, right? 2012? No, you met me. What? 2016. Oh, really? When did you start? I started 2012, but I graduated college 2016, so oh, that's, I, that's like full-time, I would consider oh, okay, it. okay, I got you. You went to college here? 
I went to college in upstate New York, oh. but I'm from here. So I would like during the winter, summer breaks, oh, okay. I would come into the city. Do I feel like I saw you around there. Yeah, I was a little inconsistent when I first started in 2012, too, though. I was like, bullshit, you know. It wasn't until like maybe 2016, 17. Actually, once I got divorced, that's when I really started going. You got divorced? Yeah. I didn't know that. Oh, really? You didn't know that? No. Dang, it's been that long since we chopped it up, right? Wait, what'd you get? I didn't. I thought you were with the same girl the whole time I've known you. Nah, man. What? Do you know, you remember when I got married? Because you know, I used to talk about her a lot on stage. Yeah. So yeah. I thought it's been, you've been with the same girl nah, the whole time. I got divorced. I got a new girl now. <laughs> Jesus, how many? So what happened? You got a new girl, three rows? <laughs> <laughs> what the hell's going on here? Yeah, yeah. So like, yeah. So, you know, I, I was, I got married. Then I got divorced. Yes. Okay. And I was single for like, I, I actually got. We actually separated right before the pandemic. Great time to get separated. Imagine if that didn't happen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we were already having some issues, but I remember she moved out. Was it? When did she move out? Dang, I don't even know. I think she might have moved out. Right when that last show we did was. Dang, like when was it? I think it might have been. Dang, I don't even remember. Such a blur. But anyway, then I was, I was single for like the pandemic. And uh, then right after the pandemic was over, I met my girl. Now we've been together for like three years, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, almost like like two, two and a half, coming up on three years. Though. That's fantastic. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, it's been going good, man. You know. And now you live with the new girl. I moved in with her. Yep. You moved in with her. Yeah, I moved in with her though. Okay. Yeah. How yeah. does that work out? How do you negotiate that? What moving in with somebody? Yeah, like how do you pick whose apartment? She had the nicer apartment. She had a nice apartment, she had a nice but apartment. I still kept my apartment. Though I still have my apartment, though. All right, what's going on here, Chris? <laughs> <You> still, <laughs> are you paying kept, rent or you own the apartment? No, I'm still paying rent on it, though. You're paying, okay. But I'm, so kind, that's but, kind of, but I'm using this kind of like an office right now, though. Okay, so yeah. it's like an office space. Okay. Slash like family wants to come in town. They they could use it's it. Cheap too, the it's not like it's it's like it's like one of those rents. It's a rent stabilized apartment. So yeah, it's, but yeah, still, it's New York. What the hell's going on here? Yeah, but I, but this is the thing. Like I would have been a fool to let it go though. You know what I mean? Is that good? Yeah. That good of a rent? yeah? It's, it's it's pretty cheap. Man. Okay, so like it wasn't that much. And then on top of that, we also and then my girl, she 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 owns, so she has like a condo. So it was also kind of like. Okay. Yeah, I mean, she's not gonna come stay with me, and you, know you can't I mean? leave a place you bought yeah, to go to a rent. Exactly, exactly. So like, but uh, yeah, man. Uh, you, have you ever lived with a woman before? No, I had uh my my ex. It was a long distance relationship, so uh, she would stay with me for two weeks to a month. Okay. How, how did you like that? Oh, it sucked. Oh, really? Well, she also wasn't great. Oh, okay. big factor of it all. Oh, okay. But uh, I mean, I don't mind the uh, living with someone. Yeah. That part I don't mind. Uh, yeah, like a lot of guys complain about like moving in. Like I don't have an issue. Like I, like I'm I, I feel well, like yeah because you have an out. You have a escape cord. Escape well, cord. Well yeah that too though. But like like living with women like I mean I think it's 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 more efficient too though. Like I think you can get. I mean I think another thing too like when you stay in two separate apartments, you got to go back and forth with each other. You know who's who's apartment. You know, you can spend time doing simple stuff when you live together, though. Y'all can clean up together, throw on some music. That's quality time, man. You know, cook, quality time, man. Okay. Pillow talking, quality. You know, like it's a lot of, you know, like it's just, you got them right there, though. And then, like, I don't know, maybe it's just the women. I Like, like just, it's just, just being there is 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 special for them, you know, like. You understand what I'm saying? I think I'm catching up what you're putting down. I think what you're saying is us being there with a woman, that's like half of it. Yeah. And then for them, they're like, oh, I'll cook and I'll clean. And then you're kind of like there while they do it. Well, not necessarily. You're like supportive. Well, and I'm not, I mean, we both cooking and cleaning, but it's just. But they do more. I wouldn't say they do more. It huh. depends on your situation. All right. I mean, are you are you a uh, let the woman do all the cooking and cleaning, and you and you? I'll order out and I'll get a maid. But I'm not. Uh, I'm not a, not a great cook. Okay. I also just don't like it. Okay. And then I have a woman come here once a month and clean. Okay, I got you. I got you. 
Because uh, that's more of a lazy thing. Oh, it's a lazy thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's not sexist. It's just lazy. No, it's just me purely not wanting to put the effort in. I got you. I can understand yeah. that. Yeah. I can understand that, though. I'm the same way, too, though. Because uh, there are a lot of instances where I just don't have time to do some of these things, though. Of course. Yeah, yeah. It's just like I have more money than I have time. Yeah. That's a good way to put it. Yeah. Because do I have time to do this? Let's be honest. Yes, I do. Yeah. I don't want to. Yeah, yeah, You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. So what are you eating on a regular basis? I do a food delivery thing. They make meals, three meals a day for me every week. They drop it off at my door. And it's like Ziploc, uh, not Ziploc, air uh, vacuumed. So it's, <laughs> this guy has a meal plan. Oh, yeah, dude. <laughs> <laughs> and That's it's all like weighed out and measured because I have a food addiction. Oh, you do? So there's not a morsel of food in this apartment that isn't sealed up that I can eat. Because if I have like a bag of chips, I, I'll eat the whole bag in a second. Oh, uh, okay. But, like okay. if I have a rotisserie chicken, I'll just eat the whole chicken when uh, I get back from the store. Oh, uh, okay. You have food addiction. Okay. Yeah, dude. Are you addicted to anything else? The game. Okay. Stand up comedy. Oh, wait, I got you. I no, got you. No, but food's a. Uh, yeah, yeah. That's okay. a problem. Alcohol, drugs, not a thing? No. Nah. No, really? I've had those since Ken. I bought those when Ken Iwanu came here to do the pod. Ken like Iwanu. a year and a half ago. Ken Iwanu came. Yeah, dude. Uh, okay, okay. So, and then we, uh, what's it called? I grizzly two bottles of whiskey because we were already pretty drunk, and then I blacked out with Ken in my apartment. Oh, <laughs> where? Yeah, dude. Yeah, Ken can drink, though. Dude, and he doesn't get hungover. Yeah, Ken can drink. And he's 70 years old. It's the craziest yeah, yeah, thing. Yeah, Ken, Ken has, a, has a high tolerance for alcohol. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I've had those two bottles for like mm. a year and a half, almost two years. Okay. Well, you know, I don't drink. You don't drink at all? Nah, man. I'm actually in recovery, man. Like, I'm, I'm in a 12-step program. What the hell? You're divorced. You got, I didn't know any of this. Oh, yeah, man. All I knew is you're from Atlanta. And are you still a barber? <laughs> I still cut hair. From okay. I, I still cut hair. Jesus. Yeah. yeah I yeah. thought I knew you. Then, <laughs> that's the beauty of these two mics. Yeah. You learn so much about something. Exactly. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, man, I, I got like 20 years clean and sober now at this point. Good for you. Congrats. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I can relate to food addiction. I feel like sometimes I, I go through like phases where I'm addicted. Like cigars are my thing. Now. Well, you you have that addictive good. personality. You're going to keep, you got to find something. I got to find something. So cigars are your thing. I haven't smoked a cigar in maybe like I'm coming up on two weeks now though. Okay. I think that's when you know you got a problem with something when you start counting how long. Yeah, how, yeah, <laughs> yeah. that's insane that you're counting. It's two weeks. <laughs> it's been about how two weeks. How are cigars a problem? I, I don't, you know what it is? I, I just think anything that you continue to do, like cigars don't, it's, it's not like you like crave a cigar, but I, I do like the celebratory, the kicking back aspect of it. I just like smoking though, you know. I always like to smoke a lot of weed. Okay. But I, You I, like smoke. I like, I like blowing smoke. Hookah? Not a big hookah fan. Yeah, yeah, that's the trashiest of the smoke. Yeah, I don't know. I'm just not never not, never been a fan of hookah though. I, li- I like I like fire. <laughs> I, li- I like like okay. I mean even though there's okay, fire. Now this with- got a little crazy, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like I, smoke. I, I, I love sound fire. Like arson is right now, right? You know. Yeah, <laughs> but I don't. know. I just like smoking. But I I like a good cigar. Uh, I like kicking back. Me and my girl, we went on a vacation not too long ago, right? Maybe like two three weeks ago. Went to DR and on a, yeah, it was an amazing trip. And the hotel, we stand in this little boutique hotel, and most hotels don't don't let you smoke on the balcony because they don't want smoke coming in, and, you know. But this particular hotel let me smoke on the balcony. I was basically chain smoking cigars. I was smoking a cigar like every. You, you can't know. chain smoke cigars. Oh, man, I, I was smoking a cigar like. I just I just kept a cigar. Did you do anything else? It sounds like you just stayed in the hotel and smoked Walk cigars. Walk on the beach, smoked cigars. Smoked cigars. I was I was at the pool smoking a cigar on the balcony smoking a cigar. You know I was. After, you know, just smoking cigars, man. Yeah, but a cigar, call us in if uh, you're gay. You can't, oh, boy, oh, what is that? Like, you, what's you, the, you ever smoke a cigar? From time, I have one in there from Chris Metcalf. Okay. Shout out to him. Uh, I like it. You like it? I you was, seem like a cigar guy. I can see you. Too. I'm open. It's a lot of things. I just, like, no one in my family ever smoked cigars, mm. you know? So it's just like I wasn't around cigars. Okay. So I'm, I don't know cigar culture. So my granddad, me and my dad, we smoke cigars. My granddad was a big cigar smoker. See? So like, yeah, that's something that me and my dad do. Like I have uh, something in my fridge right now. I have a 36-pack of Budweiser because my grandfather had a stroke, and that's my inheritance. Are you serious? Oh, yeah, dude. Yeah. <laughs> so that's what I got. <laughs> <laughs> what you drink, though? Yeah. Uh, yeah, 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 which, yeah. What you like to drink? What you? What I like to drink 
what I want to drink is like a million Bud Lights. Your butt like that. That's what I would like to drink, but not anymore. You know what I remember? I remember you having some really, really good jokes about, you, you know, you used to call yourself like trash. I still do. Long, you, like, long, like you had some really good like Long Island trash jokes. Are you from Long Island? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah I got you. Yeah, yeah. I remember, you know, I, you know, I, I thought they were super funny, though, but I, I think I remember hearing some butt like jokes and premises about drinking is Bud Light like a trashy oh yeah oh really you don't know this I'm not too familiar with it like so Bud Light is like the trashy beer Bud Light is like well after the whole you know uh trans thing <laughs> oh yeah yeah. Well, yeah 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 that really so like, like even now my dad will not drink Bud Light oh if even if you have a Bud Light near him he'll make a comment oh really you can't bring it into the house I remember because they had like yeah that was that was that was that was an interesting move about it because they had like a trans. They did a, a commercial with a trans person. Yep. <laughs> and so they were trying to like hit that market. Was- they, right. It's like a bro beer. It's like a frat beer. You oh, go to okay. a frat, they'll drink Bud Light, you yeah, know? Yeah. So then the, the executives at Bud Light said, well, let's try to get a new demo. <laughs> and boy, did the bros not like that. And so, and so sales have gone down since then. Oh, the, I think the stock went down like 20% or oh, something. Really? Oh, yeah. It took a big impact. There's still people uh, that like my dad will not drink it. Oh really? Yeah. That's funny how people can just really, really like how brands just like have that like because it's like just is there anything that you really, really were into that? Because I'm thinking like if people like Bud Light, I'm thinking they like like the taste maybe, or they like oh no. uh, it's not the taste. I guess it's, it's what it's what it stood for. Maybe like no. the image of it. But like, here's what people, I'll explain because I know the mindset of these people. Okay. People like Bud Light because it tastes like nothing and gets you mildly buzzed for a long period of time. Uh, you could drink it forever uh, and you'll maintain that buzz. Oh, uh, okay. There was no, there was nothing more than that with Bud Light. Uh, Once they put a trans person on it, now they're like, I'm not gay. Uh, and that's kind of a weird way to react to that. Oh, uh, okay. But that's their... That's the thought process of a Bud Light bro, because I'm because I'm thinking is because I'm thinking like about something that I enjoy indulging in, and if they basically associated them themselves with something that I didn't associate myself with, would I just abandon that product or would I, you know, like you? I'm I'm, I'm just thinking like I right, I don't necessarily like what they what they did, but I still like the product, right? So I guess that says something about the product, like how. Like how good it was, you or like can remove what? the art from the artist. Mm, okay. Some people can't. Oh, uh, okay. I got you. I got you. But there's a whole bunch. Well, you know what? What time is it? We're gonna switch to the Patreon. Okay. Okay. We're gonna uh, meet us over at the Patreon. Chris might show his feet. Stay gay. Okay. Here we go.